Tonight. To welcome you to this covenant day of settlement, which also doubles as our end of month Thanksgiving service, and also the last day of this seven day prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. And the Bible says the end of a matter is better. And the beginning. Please take full advantage of this day. The day is already charged. Take full advantage and take all that God has said concerning you as we conclude this session in the name of Jesus. Our prophetic theme for the month is Seasons of Glory. And all along, since this month began, in our Sunday services, we have been looking at the subject, Riding on the Waves of Glory. And this Sunday, we are concluding that teaching as we look at part four of that teaching, Riding on the Waves of Glory, part four. This service we are looking at part 4a. By redemption we have established. We have been justified to be glorified. Romans chapter 5 and verse 9. Much more than being now justified by his blood. We shall be saved from wrath through him. We have been justified by his blood to be glorified. We have been justified to enjoy a life of glory. That's what we are saying. And not shame. And that is further validated in Romans chapter 8. And verses 29 to 30, he said, For whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. And verse 30, Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called. And whom he called, them he also justified. Remember, we have been justified by his blood. And ultimately, those he justified, then he also glorified. Jesus paid the price with his blood for us. He couldn't have sacrificed so much for us to live a pitiable life. He wouldn't have sacrificed so much with his blood for us to live a life of shame. No. That cannot be Jesus. He gave the best he had so that we can enjoy life at its best. Not to live a life of shame and sorrow. But to live a life of glory, a life of attraction. But we can only ride on these waves of glory by engaging the diverse operations of the Holy Spirit. For by strength shall no man prevail. For Samuel chapter 2 and verse 9. It is not he that will it, nor he that run it, but of God that showeth mercy. We can only ride these waves of glory, moving from one realm of glory to another, by the help of the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Zechariah chapter 4 and verse 6. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. He answered and spoke unto me, saying, This is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of us, by my spirit, by my spirit, by my spirit. So we can, uh, we can only enjoy a 
life of glory by engaging the operations, the diverse operations of the Holy Spirit who is our principal helper. And all through the month we have been looking at these diversities of the operations of the Holy Spirit which is principally for the profiting of man. We'll be looking at different aspects that the Holy Ghost operates in making our life glorious. And this Sunday, we're going to be looking more into three major other areas of operations of the Holy Spirit. Number one is the spirit of dedication. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of dedication. John chapter 10 and verses 17 and 18. John chapter 10 and verses 17 and 18. Jesus speaking, therefore, does my father love me? Why? Because I laid down my life that I may take it again. And for your information, Jesus' father said, no man taketh it from me. It's not by force. I lay it down of myself. It's by my choice. I have power to lay it down. I have power to take it again. These commandments have I received of my father. You see how he commanded the love of his father. My father loved me. Why? Because I laid down my life willingly. John chapter 12. And verses 23 to 26. And Jesus answered them saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Who doesn't like glory? Jesus is saying, The time for my glorification has come. The time for your glorification has come. The time for God's glory to show forth in your life has come. He said, But what is the secret? For this life of glory, what is this secret to enjoy glory? Verily, verily, I say unto you. When you hear Jesus say verily, verily, it doesn't mean he's a stammerer. He's only telling you this one is crucial. Listen and listen well. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except, except, which means if this one is not done, don't expect anything except a cone of wheat falls into the ground and die. It abided alone, refuses to die, makes you remain the same. That's why you see many people over the years, they are born again, but nothing is changing in their life. Just the same thing. The same thing. Nothing enviable around them. Are they born again? Yes, they are born again. But why is things not happening? That's the secret. Except a cone of wheat falls into the ground and die, it abided alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruits. He that loveth his life shall lose it. He that hated his life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor or glorify. That's the secret to a life of glory. Dedication. Except you are ready to die, you cannot live. Except you are ready to die, you cannot be, your life cannot be an attraction. Your glory, your honor is in your dying. Many are born again, but they are not dead to flesh. They are not dedicated. Praise the name of the Lord. They are armchair Christians. They are executive Christians. That wants to enjoy all the comfort without any sacrifice. But they want the best from God. Until you give God your best, don't expect his best. Praise the name of the Lord. Any service that does not cost you something, he cannot give you anything. 
except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and die. It abided alone. No attraction. Now look at Mark chapter 4 and verses 30 to 33. Mark 4, 30 to 33. And he said, Where unto shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what comparison shall we compare it? Is it not like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seed that it be on the earth? It is buried, has no significance, has no color, is hidden, nobody can see it at that moment. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs and shooted out great branches. It becomes an attraction. So that the fowl of the air may come and lodge under the shadow of it. But see where it began. Just one small grain. And he accepts to be sown. To be sown on the earth is to, you know how you sow a seed? You, you plant a seed, you dig the earth and bury the seed inside and cover it. Nobody sees it. But the problem with many believers is that, you know why many people are not dedicated? They are position seekers. They want to be seen. They want to be known. So every little thing touches them, affects their service. They are calling anybody. They didn't even call me. They don't know me. They want to be known. They want to be seen. But the way up is down. The way up is down. Hallelujah. To be the greatest, you must die to self. Die to self. To, 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 to gain prominence, you must first of all die. Praise the name of the Lord. He said that same seed became the greatest. The birds from everywhere came on that tree to seek shelter. But that was that same seed that was hidden. Nobody sees yesterday. Nobody knew what that seed was passing through inside the ground. The heat, the discomfort. Nobody saw it. Now it has become an attraction. Dedication. Until you give it all it takes. You can't take all that it can give. Dedication. That's what a life of dedication requires. What is dedication, therefore? Number one, dedication is sticking to a cause. Sticking to a cause. You are, you are stuck to a cause. Nothing can dislodge you or distract you. You are stuck to it. What is dedication? Number two, it means to be deadly committed. You are dead in to self. Committed. There is no price you can pay for that service to God. John chapter 12, 24. 26 is where we have read. Deadly committed. You are deadly committed. You don't feel anything. Praise the name of the Lord. You don't feel anything. In John chapter 4, verse 34, Jesus says, My mate is to do the work of him that has sent me. And to finish his work. That's all that matters to him, he, he stuck to that assignment. Nothing can distract him. Nothing can temper with his commitment. That's dedication. Come sun, come rain, you are there. You are committed, you are dedicated. You are dead to self. Praise the name of the Lord. If you want to attract attention in your life, you must pay attention. Pay attention to the way you handle the things of God. Pay attention. Pay your attention. Pay attention. That's how to attract attention. Give it all it takes. Dedication to God and his kingdom. If you are not serving God, you may become a waste to your generation. That will not be your portion. Serving God and the interest of his kingdom in all its ramifications being dedicated to it. What is it that you are doing in God's kingdom now that can be said to be service? If you ask, service. Is it just coming to church? 
say, I'm serving God. How are you serving God? I come to church every Sunday. Ah. Everybody comes to church. Even people of other religions, if they like, they can come to church. That's not enough. Being productively and committedly, continuously, fervently committed to a cause in the kingdom of God is service. Praise the name of the Lord. Serving the interests of his kingdom. Praying. Engaging in soul winning. Giving to the necessities of people. Ensuring that you are part of expanding the kingdom of God. And being committed to it. Not that you do it once and you stop. Being committed to it. There are people that have been committed over the years. To various services to God. Nobody even see them, but they are. The Spirit of God is what helps you to be dedicated because man on his own gets wearied very easy. Man can see a thousand and one reasons to stop every good. That's the devil's strategy. He wants to weary you. He wants to get you to stop every good thing and continue every bad thing. That's the agenda of the devil. That's why to do, to continue in one good thing is so difficult. But to continue in bad thing, somebody will be telling you, I've been struggling with this smoking since 23 years. He, he doesn't struggle to continue. But there is a struggle when he wants to stop. Because the devil will always fight any good thing. But any bad thing is cheap. You don't have money to smoke. You see somebody going around with a packet of uh, cigarette. You care? You care for one? You care for one? If the person takes one, he can come back again. You need more, you need more, you need more, you need more. To kill somebody is free. But to give life is difficult. Somebody who does not have money, he will go to the bar parlor with his friends. He will tell the woman, give them one, one bottle. The woman says, this, I owe you, I will come tomorrow. And they are drinking, so you want more, give them another one bottle. And if any one of them say, okay, I don't want to drink that thing, give me the equivalent of the money. He won't give you. Praise the name of the Lord. That's what the devil does. He makes evil cheap and easy to continue. But he makes it difficult to continue in good works. That's why you need the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit. He helps us to be dedicated to a just cause. It's a spirit of dedication. Praise the name of the Lord. Number two, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of guidance. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of guidance. John chapter 16 and verses 12 to 14. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. How be it? When he, the spirit of truth, is coming, we guide you into all truths. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Verse 14. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine, and shall show it unto you. He will show it unto you. The Holy Spirit is a shower. He shows things. He guides us. He will lead us. He will guide us into all truths. He will guide us to all truths. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 21 is the spirit of guidance. And they passed not when he led them through the desert. He caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them. He cleaved the rock also and the waters gushed out. They passed not when he led them. When the Holy Spirit is leading you, you will not suffer thirst in life. You will not lack any good thing when the Holy Spirit is leading you. They pass not. He even caused the rock to cliff. He removes every obstacle. He's leading you to clear every obstacle. I will go before you and make all the crooked ways straight. That's the work of the Holy Spirit to lead us. Our destiny is great, but we need divine guidance. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 23 verses 1 to 6. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. 
Naked me to lie down in green pastures. He leaded me beside the still waters. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. He said, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me, makes my enemies helpless. In the presence of my enemy, they can't do anything. In fact, you even anointed my head and make my cup to run over to get them angry. Surely, when God is leading you, surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life so that you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So when the Holy Spirit leads us, he leads us to a place of abundance. He leads us to a place of glory, not shame. That's why we need divine guidance. Every destiny thrives on divine guidance. Only the guidance of God is sure. That's what is error free. Even scientific instruments can make error. Praise the name of the Lord. Error. Error. Only God, only God is error free. So when the Holy Spirit is leading you, he guides you to a place of glory. Only the guy there ends up as the greatest. We saw the life of Isaac in Genesis chapter 26. He wanted to leave. God said, stay here. Don't use the experience of your father. I dealt with him personally. You are a different entity. Stay here. That somebody did that business and succeeded does not mean that if you do it, you will succeed. That's why in everything you need divine guidance. Some people have plugged their life into all manners of debts just because somebody did that business and succeeded. They say, yes, I can do it. And then when you plug your money into it, nothing works. Divine guidance. Divine guidance. In every area of our life, we will always need divine guidance. See how Isaac ended Genesis 26, 12 to 14. Why? Because he was guided by the Holy Spirit. He had possession of flocks, possession of herds, and great store of servants. And the Philistines envied him. And the Bible says in verse 15, For all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, the Philistines, had stopped them and filled them up with us. Praise the name of the Lord. Verses 12 to 14, he ended up in greatness. His life ended up as a point of envy, not pity. Why? Because he was led, he was divinely guided. No matter how much you have grown in the faith, you will always need divine guidance. Nobody ever outgrows divine guidance. Nobody. You can never grow above it. Proverbs chapter 3 and verse 6. He says, in all your ways, acknowledge him, for he will direct your path. In all your ways, not in some of your ways, in all your ways, following the shepherd is what guarantees greatness in life. Psalm 105 and verse 37. He brought them forth also with silver and gold, and there was no any feeble one among them. He brought them. He brought them. If he's the one leading you, you won't suffer. You won't suffer. If the one leading you, you won't suffer. If you want to end up in any area of your life in glory, please allow the Spirit of God to lead you. To walk in this wicked world and walk safe, you need divine guidance. Proverbs chapter 14 and verse 12. There's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof, their way of destruction, their way of death. You need divine guidance. The world is full of all manners of evil. We need divine guidance. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He guides us. Let him guide you. That's how to make a meaningful life. No matter how easy something may be, if God is not there, you still end up a failure. You end up a failure. Let God guide you. Businessmen and women, let God guide you each time. Each time. Don't say everybody is doing it. 
Let God guide you. Don't just enter into a business because you think it's lucrative. Let the Spirit of God guide you. In choosing a career in life, let the Spirit of God guide you. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the Spirit of God guide you in choosing a career. Parents, don't choose career for your children. Guide them. Help them to be able to know what it is that they are best at. Don't say because I'm, 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 I'm a doctor, my son must be a doctor. When you know there's nothing doctoring in him. Did you hear that? Praise the name of the Lord. Don't say because I'm, I'm, I'm an accountant. My son must be an accountant. <laughs> He's dangerous. Instead of signing a check of 100,000, he, he can sign for 1 million without knowing. Let God guide them by His Spirit. In choosing a future partners, young men and young ladies, let God guide you. It's not all that glitters that is gold. I just like that guy. Oh, he's cute. I just like his physique. He's broad chested. He's just cute, eh? Everything, just cute. Everything. Anytime I see him, oh. You don't know what is inside of him. I just like that sister. I just, I just like her. Even the way she walks. Just like her. Very beautiful. Very everything. Good. I like her hairstyle. Who tell you say now yes now? Now wig. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Let God guide you. Let God guide you. Let the Spirit of God guide you and lead you. There is nothing wrong in all those things, but let God guide you. Praise the name of the Lord. It is the leading of God. That makes for greatness and fulfillment in life. That's why we need the Holy Spirit. We need the Holy Spirit. And if the Holy Spirit must guide you, you must be spiritual. The Spirit of God will speak to your spirit. If you are not spiritual, if you don't even know how to hear from God, how will He lead you? Some people are so carnal. You can't hear God. You can't hear God. Every time you sit down, it's rattling. All manners of things rattling in your mind. Rattling, rattling, rattling. You are fighting, you are always fighting with somebody in your hand. Your thoughts are not right. Your thoughts are not pure. The Holy Ghost cannot stay in an impure environment. You can't hear God. Because you are always noisy inside. Even when you are in church, Everyone that passes, you must analyze the person in your heart. See this one, where they go now, where they go now. Where they go? See the way, where they walk. You are, you are always talking. Message is going on, you are not here, and you are only looking like this. You can be shaking your head, but you are not there. You are not there. Your mind is off. Off. I told you the story of somebody in church. Pastor was preaching, message was going, heavy message. Everybody was listening. He too was listening. Looked like as if he was concentrating. And the moment he was shaking his head, Pastor thought that the Holy Spirit is working. And the moment the pastor said, Praise the Lord! He said, 10,000. So all the time he was shaking his head, he was counting. Yes, one thousand, two thousand, 
5,000. And he said, praise the Lord. He said, 10,000. He said, oh, sorry. Amen. 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 Come on, shout hallelujah. Your spirit must be still to hear his voice. Because God leads by a still small voice. Your spirit man must, your heart must be pure. So that you can hear his voice distinctly. You must be spiritual. Be spiritual. So that he can lead you. Some people are so active when it comes to carnality. But when it comes to spiritual things, they are not there. They are not there. He can sit down gossiping for one whole hour. He will be talking, talking continuously. Cha 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 cha. But when it comes to time for prayer, five minutes prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I don't tell you. I don't know what to talk. They can't pray for five minutes. But one whole hour, when it's gossiping and talking, they'll be talking, 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 talking. Five minutes of prayer, they're tired. No fire, nothing. Oh God, oh God, oh God. Oh God, thank you. Oh God. We don't they pray for nations since one week. They never do. The one way we don't pray, don't do, don't do. Beg. Make them they pray. Me, I don't tire. I don't go pray again. You must be spiritual. You, you, your spirit man must be alive all the time. So that anytime you want to take a wrong step and the spirit of God says, no, you can hear. Stop. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of guidance. Number three is the spirit of boldness. Is the spirit of boldness. Acts chapter 4 and verse 13. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, they perceived that they were unlearned and ignorant men. They marveled and they took notice of them and that they had been with Jesus. Don't forget in Acts chapter 2, they had the baptism of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. The Holy Ghost sat upon them. They had that encounter with the Holy Ghost. And is this same Peter who used to be timid? Small girl, ask him, are you not one of those people? He said, no, no, I'm not one of them. I'm not too. He said, but you look like, I said, I'm not. Came again the second time. I said, what thing happened now? They sent you to me. He said, I'm not. The third time, he said, look, eh, I'm not. And just after that, the cock crow. And he began to weep. It wasn't as if he meant to deny his master. He was not bold enough to declare so. But when the Holy Ghost came, that spirit of boldness came. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of boldness. The spirit of boldness. There are people who could not face the crowd before. There are people who could not go on outreach before. They couldn't talk to people about Jesus. But when they got born again, baptized in the Holy Ghost, suddenly... They became firebrand. The Holy Spirit is a spirit of boldness. Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. Acts chapter 14 and verse 3. Long time. Therefore, a bold day. Speaking boldly in the Lord, which gave testimony into the word of his grace and granted signs and wonders to be done by their hands. The spirit of boldness. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of a sound mind. Not fair. Second Peter 1, 7. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. He said, The wicked flee when no man persuades him, but the righteous is as bold as a lion. Proverbs 28 and verse 1. <laughs> you see all through the scriptures. All the children of Israel went to hiding because of Goliath. David came with that spirit operating in him. He said, Look, this day I will bring down your head. Bold, small boy. Large heart, big mouth, because of the presence of the Holy Spirit upon his life. Daniel was bold. There's anyone who does not pray to this our God 
prays to any other god, he will be thrown into the lion's den. <laughs> Daniel said, when I never know anything, open the window here, open the window here, and face that window so that they will see him. God! What will you say about the three Hebrew brothers? The king said, everybody must bow to his God. <laughs> they looked at him. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to address you in this matter. We are not ready to bow to your God. Our God will deliver us. And even if he does not deliver us, we will still not bow. We prefer to bow. Thank you. Bow! Because of the workings of the Holy Spirit upon their lives. Praise the name of the Lord. Workings. They arrested Paul. And then secretly they wanted to release him. <laughs> Paul said, no, you arrested me openly. Why do you want to release me secretly? They look at him and say, look, we will allow you to go. It's because people have begged us. So many calls, we have received so many calls. That's why. If not, we will have killed you. But go. We warn you never to speak in this name again. If you love your life. Paul says, have you people finished? Thank you very much. I have one question to ask you. Eh? Who do we obey? Do we obey God or man? Who do you think we should obey? <laughs> they look at him. Boldness! That's the oppression of the Spirit of God. That is the Holy Spirit. From this day, you receive a baptism of the Spirit in the name of Jesus. From this day, you receive a baptism of the Spirit of dedication. You receive the oppression of the Spirit of guidance. Receive the spirit of boldness from today. No challenge will scare you in the name of Jesus. Today is our covenant day of settlement. Where God is ready to settle every case concerning us and concerning our destiny. Praise the name of the Lord. By redemption, no child of God is permitted to suffer beyond a particular point. In fact, the Bible says, a while, a moment. In First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But the grace of the God of all grace, who had called unto his who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. After that ye have suffered a while. Can I hear you say a while? Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, and set to can I hear you say, God will say to me today? Oh, say it one more time. Oh, he said, you are not permitted to suffer beyond a while. In 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 17, he said, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. Can I hear you say a moment? <laughs> say it one more time. <laughs> which is for a moment. Work it for us. A far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. A far more exceeding eternal weight of glory, which is but for a moment. He said, You are not permitted to suffer for a while. What do we mean by a while? Scripturally, it could be one hour, not more than an hour. Matthew chapter 8, verses 8 to 10. Revelation chapter 18, verse 10. It could mean overnight. Psalm 30 and verse 5. For weeping may endure, but just for the night. For joy comes in the morning. Overnight. Overnight. After this service, some will have an overnight encounter. Yeah. I say, some will have an overnight encounter. It could connote one day. Second Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2. He said, For he said, I have heard thee in a time accepted. And in the day of salvation, have I succored thee? Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. 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 Day of salvation. Praise the name of the Lord. It's a day of salvation. It could be one day. It could be three days. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 3. It could be three days. So, Hosea chapter 6 and verse 2. 
After two days, will he revive us? And in the third day, he will raise us up. And we shall live in his heart. Three days. So a while is a while. It doesn't con- connote something long. It doesn't con- connote something long. So if there is anything that is taking too long in your life, it is turning to a cause. It's turning to a cause which must be dealt with. Because that is one of the causes of the law in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 59. Long continuous. That's what God brought upon the Egyptians, not upon you. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuous, and so sicknesses and of long continuous. That's a plague on the Egyptians, not upon you. That's a cause. And as a child of God, you are redeemed not to be under any cause. Galatians 3, 13 to 14. Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. Inasmuch as he died on the cross, for cause is everyone that hangeth on the tree. That the blessings of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So anything that has tarried too long in your life, any kind of evil, that has stayed, is it joblessness? Is it barrenness? Is it any kind of sickness? Whatever it is that has stayed long, today, it is caused in the name of Jesus. That's not your portion today, it's caused in the name of Jesus. Whatever issue that has tarried too long in your life, today, it shall be settled in the name of Jesus. What are the covenant requirements, therefore, for my settlements? What are the covenant requirements for my settlements? Number one, you must be born again. You must be born again. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 21. For he had made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that he might be made the righteousness of God. In him, you must be born again. And then when you are born again, you enjoy peace on every side. John chapter 14 and verse 27. Peace I live with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give it. Give it I unto you. Let therefore not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Trouble ceases when the peace of God comes into your heart. And the peace of God can come until you are born again. If you are not born again, the struggling continues. If you are not born again, you can't receive quietness. Isaiah 32 and verse 17. And the work of righteousness shall be peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Isaiah 32 and verse 17. Give your life to Jesus. And then that issue of your life will be permanently settled. Number two. You want to be settled? Settle with God. Settle with God. All this life of one leg in, one leg out. Settle with God. Settle with God. Psalm 16 and verse 4. Their sorrows shall be multiplied that hasten after another God. Their, their drink offering or blood will I not offer, nor take up their names into my lips. Their sorrows will be multiplied. All because you want that aspect of your life to be done. You are going from one harbor list to another. Settle with God. It's only God that gives children. It's only God that gives job. It's only God that gives position. Promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, but from the Lord. He brings one down, he takes one up. Settle with God. Because you want to be married and they are taking you around places. They will give you something today to leak. Tomorrow they will give you to rub your face. And that's what is carrying men away from you in case you don't. Stop going around places. Help cannot be gotten anywhere but in God. Whatever the devil, devil gives you, he will take it and multiply food. Settle with God. Sunday you are coming here with your Bible, with your bottle of oil. Monday you are in the Havali's house. Going around to places that you call prayer house in courts. Doing all manners of things. 
stickers all, all around your houses, your car, your house, your place, of, everywhere. But yet, you still have people you consult. Consult. You say, open your hand. Mm -hmm. And you are scared. This sin is, is serious. Go and bring one white cow. And that's where you call prayer house. Go and back, bath naked, 12 a.m. That's where you call prayer house. Where is your Bible? With all your intelligence. They tell you to pray here. Five minutes, ten minutes, you can't pray. And you go there, anything they tell you to do, you do, you, 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 you go going about and be shaking. Settle with God. And then your issue will be settled permanently. And number three, settle down with the settled word of God. Every other thing will pass away, but God's word will never pass away. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 and 29. He said, come unto me, all you that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you will find rest unto your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Take my yoke, learn of me, learn of me, know my ways. Settle with the world, and your destiny will be settled. Settle with the world, settle with the world. Don't be a Sunday, Sunday Christian. Settle with the world. Create avenue to no more. Create avenue to no more. Some have been here for years. They have not attended Bible school. Settle more with the world. And then you will be liberated. When the word of God comes, light comes. And every darkness is shattered. May the Lord give you understanding. In the name of Jesus. Whatever issue in your life that is not settled this morning, it shall be settled in the name of Jesus. First thing first, you are here, you are not born again, you have not accepted Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. Please, quickly give me this opportunity, I will pray for you. Jesus will come into your life and you will be born again. And that issue will be settled. Oh, I know you have been going to many places. You are only going from pillar to post. It is Jesus that can settle your matter. And when he settles it, it is settled indeed. So wherever you are seated this morning, hearing my voice. You are not born again. You have not ever received Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior. I want to pray one very simple prayer with you. You'll be born again. Jesus will come into your life. And then, these issues, you will see before your face, settled one after the other. Wherever you are there for, maybe you gave your life to Jesus before you were slated, or you have not done it at all. You know your life. I want you to rise up on your feet now. I want to pray with you. Please, let me pray with you. Wherever you are, rise up on your feet. God bless you. You want to give your life to Jesus now? Thank you. Thank you. Rise up on your feet. Thank you. God bless you. I can see your sincerity. Rise up. Rise up. You are lifting up. You are rising up. Please take your Bible and your bag. Come towards me now. I want to pray with you. All those around them, please help me direct them to the front quickly. Wherever you are, take your Bible, your bag, begin to come forward. God bless you. Come quickly, come quickly, come quickly. Help me clap for them. They are coming. They are coming. Don't sit down. Somebody right now. Something is telling you, you are the one pastor is talking about. You are the one, you are the one. Get up, get up, get up, get up. Another thing is telling you, sit down. That's the devil. He wants to mismanage your destiny. Come quickly. Church, help me clap for them. They are coming, they are coming, they are coming. Don't live here without giving your life to Jesus. You want God to settle that issue concerning your life? Come quickly, come quickly. Help me clap for them. Seven more persons, wherever you are, rise up now. Rise up now. Something is telling you. You are the one they are talking about. You are the one they are talking about. Another thing is telling you, don't go, don't go. People are looking at you, don't go. That's the devil. He wants to steal your miracle. Rise up, rise up, rise up. And begin to come. Begin to come quickly. Begin to come quickly. God bless you. Come quickly. Help me clap for them, church. They are coming. Help me clap for them. They are coming. They are coming. Come quickly. Come quickly. Today is your day of salvation. Today is your day of salvation. Why are you still thinking? Why are you still thinking? Rise up. Rise up. Rise up. And begin to come. God bless you. God bless you. Begin to come. Today is your day of salvation. Don't let the devil tell you, do it tomorrow. Now is the acceptable time. 
When do you want your matter settled? Now. Now. Rise up and join us. And join us. God bless you. God bless you. Five more persons are coming. Join us before we finish praying now. Join us before we finish praying now. God bless you. God bless you. Come quickly. Come quickly. All these wonderful people in front, can I ask you to bow your head? Please put up your right hand as a sign of surrender to God. Put up your right hand and pray this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I come to you this morning. I realize I'm a sinner, but you died for me. You took away my sins. You paid the price for me. Jesus, my heart is open. Come into my heart this morning. Be my Lord and my Savior. From today, I will serve you. Thank you for receiving me. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Let me pray with you now. Father, in the name of Jesus, thank you for these precious souls that you have drawn into your kingdom today. I ask that you preserve them. Let none of them be lost in the name of Jesus. I put a seal of God upon you. You will serve the living God. In Jesus' mighty name. Whatever may be the source of that stagnation in your life, whatever may be the source of that obstacle in your life, today, that case is settled in the name of Jesus. Every marital delay, it is settled in the name of Jesus. Every financial delay, is settled in the name of Jesus. Every health and healing you desire, receive it now in the name of Jesus. Every job opportunity that has started now, receive instant intervention in the name of Jesus. Every promotion that has lingered for too long, I decree before this month is over, you will hear good news in the name of Jesus. That business breakthrough is coming to pass before the end of this month. Whatever it is that have delayed in your life, it is declared settled now. It is declared settled now. That womb is open now. That business is open now. That job is open now. Heaven's open unto you now. No more shame for you anymore. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Between now and the next three weeks, your testimony will show up. The God of this commission will show up. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. You will be a victim of kidnap this week. You will not sorrow over any issue this week. The God of Bishop Edipo visit you. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name. Surely, God's goodness and mercy. All the days of our lives, we shall dwell in the presence of the Lord forever. Amen. It's my new dawn era. What eyes have not seen or ears heard shall be the order of the day in my life this year. Congratulations.